1968 blowouts, as they were called, that's a term that one of the students, when the students walked out of the East LA schools in March of 68, it was a student walkout, student strike. One of the students used the term blowout which is kind of a jazz term to suggest kind of putting an emphasis on something. Mm -hmm. And that just cut, caught on, and the media picked it up, and they began to refer to these walkouts as the blowouts. Historically, what's important about the walkouts is that they were uh, one of the first urban manifestations of the Chicano movement of the late 1960s. And these were students walking out in protest of years of segregated and inferior schooling in the Southwest and Southern California in terms of Mexican-Americans in the public schools. For years, these institutions have been referred to as Mexican schools. They were segregated by local school board decisions. They were inferior schools, provided limited education, inferior resources, limited resources, high dropout rates, low reading scores, low expectations of the kids, and so forth and so on. And so uh, what it meant is that the kids going through these public schools, very few of them graduated, and if they graduated, very few went on to college. The schools, in a way, saw these kids as simply additions to the unskilled, semi-skilled labor force that was being developed in terms of Mexicans in the United States, especially those who came as immigrants in the early 20th century. They were prized for unskilled labor the kids going to the schools were seen as just kind of replenishing what the work that their parents were doing. And so uh, these problems were there throughout the 20th century into the 1960s. And finally, in 1968, at least here in Los Angeles, the students, or many of the students, had had enough. They felt that uh, these problems had reached a point where no one was paying attention to them. And then inspired, of course, by Sal Castro, uh, they decided to do a strike. They decided to, to demonstrate, to protest, walk out of their schools, and bring attention to these problems. In my opinion, these walkouts would not have occurred without Sal Castro. He was one of the few Chicano, Mexican-American teachers teaching in the East LA schools in the late 1960s. Sal had been teaching since 1963 in the public schools. He had already been involved with uh, trying to bring about changes in these schools. He knew the problems very well. He himself had attended for a time to the public schools, although he ultimately, uh, in terms of his elementary and his high school years, he graduated from Catholic high school, but he knew very well. Uh, and he had taught in the early 60s at Belmont High School in downtown LA. And already there, he tried to bring about changes. And, he, and then he recognized that you know changes weren't gonna come about easy. So they transferred him to Lincoln High School. There the problems were just the same. He began to meet with the students, he began to take them to these leadership conferences that were developing to try to bring about Mexican-American student leadership and encourage them to go to colleges. But in the end, Sal also came to the conclusion that only a dramatic action was going to bring about some kind of educational change, some kind of educational justice. And so he met with the kids, they began to organize, they began to plan a walkout. And this is into the 1967-68 school year. And so the idea was that unless somehow the school administration, administration's school board began to listen, that they would, the kids would walk out. He helped to develop a critical consciousness among the students. They learned from Sal, and so, and they were, of course, inspired by him. Mm -hmm. That's why I say that I don't think that without Sal Castro, these blowouts, these walkouts would have occurred, or they would not have occurred in the more dramatic way and the more significant way that, that they developed. Well, I, I think the walkouts did bring about some significant changes over time, incrementally. It's, it wasn't like the schools all of a sudden changed. But at least the, the, the school board of L.A. and the school district in L.A. now became aware that there were concerns by the Mexican-American community, by Mexican-American students, that there were major problems in the schools that needed to be addressed.